Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna walk through how you can structure an amazing blog post and do it over and over and over again so that your site grows in organic traffic and really truly usefulness for your readers. And this has helped me rank at the top of Google for the most important keywords for my business. In this video, I'm gonna have six major categories for you, six major tips to consider when you're creating content specifically for SEO and to optimize your blog. And at the end, I am gonna have a bonus tip for you, so you want to check that out. You could definitely just fast forward to the end, but it'll make most sense if you watch all the way through. Cool, so let's get into it. I'm gonna show you examples, live examples from our website of blog posts that perform really well on Google and how they're structured, all right? So you're gonna get a full scope of how this works. All right, so the first article we're gonna look at, uh, currently we're ranked number four uh, on the Google homepage for Become a Squarespace Designer. A lot of people search this. And the article that we have, this is it. What you wanna focus on is with content, number one is gonna be, you just want one H1. And that's typically the title. You don't wanna use H1 anywhere else in the article. So these here are either, I think they're H3s, but they're either H2s or H3. The reason is it shows a clear hierarchy to Google, what's the most important content versus what are subheadings, things like that. So first of all, only use one H1. Next, you wanna use a proper use of H2, 3, and 4. So let me go into the editor here. And let's take a look. This here is an H3. And so we use H3s consistently through any of the, the sections that are major sections. So here again is an H3. This isn't a paragraph one. So it's a, it's a smaller point within this point. So as you would do with any essay in school, you wanna make sure the formatting and the structure is done correctly. Pro tip, you want to answer questions with H2 or H3s. That shows a high level of value. So if you go back to this result here, how much can you make as a Squarespace designer? That would be the title for one of the sections here. So instead of this, like assign a value, I would have that as a question here if I was trying to answer that question specifically. Have it set up as an H2 or an H3. Next, one thing you'll notice in this blog post, the longest paragraph here is four lines. So you wanna keep it just about that. This one could even be cut a little bit more. So you could go in here and this can be something like this. Smaller sentences or smaller paragraphs is easier to read. This leads us into number two, readability. Readability is huge. This is one that I think gets overlooked a lot on Squarespace blogs specifically. I'm gonna show you how you can optimize this yourself. Number one, take note of the font size. When I look at this, it's really easy for me to read it. This heading could be, it's a little bit thick or bold or just there's a lot of contrast. That's more towards our brand, but it's still relatively easy to read. There's probably stuff that's easier. Overall, you wanna make sure it's very easy to read. And there's a few things to consider. The first one is font size. Never go beyond below 15 pixels for the base font size. Let me show you what I mean. So if I go to the style editor here, I go to fonts, make sure the base size is at least 15 pixels. If you go too small, it could look cool, but it's difficult to read. And this is something I see a lot of newer sites or people who don't have a lot of experience with website design do. Make sure it's really easy to read. At the same time, check it on mobile and make sure it's easy to read. Now I'm going to get out of this editor and I'm going to take a look at one other thing here that's important. So when you're in here, one thing that people miss is they'll do the content width as wide. And this, this is my biggest like challenge with Squarespace when I see blogs that do this this is not ideal. This is really hard for the human eye to read. They do this in textbooks, but it's been proven, it's been shown that anything above about 15 or 16 words per line, there might be an exact number, but anything beyond 15 words per line is hard for the eye to follow. So max it out at about 12 to 15 words per line. 
We use around, let's go back to the top here, 45, which I think is narrow. So let's take a look at that and then do custom. Yeah, I, it might be even a little bit smaller than that. So this is really a lot easier to read than what we were just looking at. If it's across the whole page, it's a lot. So setting that up is great. The next one is gonna be line height. So the amount of space between each line is really valuable as well. So if I go into the font here and then paragraph, line height, we're using 1.7 EM. Let's just say I make it 0.9 or let's just even say one. So one can be like ideal, but you could see here, this is really hard to read or it just feels like it's too tight. So something between 1.4 to 1.8 EM, depending on your font is great. And then finally, word count. Word count is really subjective, but just make sure the blog post is more than 300 words. It's not really a blog post if it's only 200 words. You wanna make sure it's a full-size blog post. A great way to know is go compare it to other blog posts. So I'd look at this one, I'd look at this one, I'd look at this and see how much they've written. Is it 100 words it, or 1,000 words? Is it 5,000 words? Get a feel for what each result is bringing up word count wise, and then you can get a sense of how many words your post should be. Sometimes 750 is great, and sometimes 3000 is ideal. It's a lot more work, but you wanna make sure the word count is correct. Now, quick interruption. We have a full, it's free, a full checklist, a blogging checklist for you to get up and running and have a quality check against every single blog post to make sure you publish it correctly, whether it's you, a virtual assistant, or someone on your team. You wanna make sure that you do this properly every time. And this process that we're walking through right now is the intro to it. So this checklist, check the link down below, is so valuable for you. And if you really want to explode with SEO, we have a second product. This is actually a paid product. It's our blogging starter kit. It's a great way for you to get up and running in less than 30 days blogging. And at the same time, how to maximize reverse engineer search results show, so you do show up at the top of Google. That's how we have done it every single time and gotten consistent results. So make sure you check it out. It's on sale right now. Check the link down below to learn more. All right, now we're gonna hop into number three. Number three is really important. Important. I'm gonna go back into the editor and I'm just gonna click on this right here at the top, the white bar. So I get into the settings. Now, just basically the simple rule here is fill it all out. Fill out as much as you can. Number one, featured image, make sure you have a featured image. Number two, for the excerpt, make sure you have the excerpt. For number three, the post URL is critically important. The small tip here, and I have a full extensive guide in that checklist that I was talking about and the blogging starter kit that I was talking about, the search query that you wanna show up on for Google, that's what the keyword should be. Don't include dates, don't include numbers, like 17 tips, because in the future, if you make it 19, you don't wanna change the URL. Just use whatever that core keyword or long tail keyword phrase is that you want to focus on. Cool. That's a huge one. You don't want to change it in the future. You want to set it off right from the beginning. If you do change it in the future, you want to make sure you set up 301 redirects. Just Google that and you'll figure it out. Okay. So you'll make sure all that's filled out. Then you'll go to options and you'll make sure this is all set up correctly the way you want. And then SEO, you'll make sure that this is all set up the way you want. Make sure this is all optimized. You're good to go. You can add a social sharing image here as well if you like, but for now we are good to go. Now, number four, simple, easy, and clear. Use images often, even if they are stock footage, I would recommend using it as much as possible. This is our 60 point Squarespace SEO checklist. And as you can see here, a ton of content. By the way, this is a plugin that I got from, I'll, I'll link it down below for you, um, from another developer that I absolutely love working with. Simple plugin, you just add to any post and it automatically creates this table of contents for you. So it's easy to hide and show. But now back to this point. In this case, as you can see, once I get into the content, each point has its own image. Now, obviously I'm doing it SEO, I'm showing you what to do, but at the same time, you definitely wanna make sure you use images often. Use them for every major point. As you would look at any, any blog on Forbes or like 
what else is there? TMZ, I would like, that's maybe a good example, maybe not. But any blog you look at, they're gonna use an image almost on every single point. And this layout is great. Title above the image, the actual image, and then the content below it. Again, title, image, content below it. It's a great, great process. Next, let's go to, this is a big one. Ensure that you have Google Analytics and Google Search Console set up. So number five is make sure your Google products are connected properly. And there's a lot of ways to talk about this, but I'm just gonna say this, make sure Google Analytics is set up and that Google Search Console is constantly crawling your website that it's set up, that you submit your sitemap once a month. Is that necessary? Not really, but I still do it just to do it be over the top. So make sure that you are optimizing your content as much as possible with those two tools. And again, there are a ton of resources that are online. Just Google it, check out my channel. I'll show you how to set up Google Analytics in a video. I'll show you how to set up Google Search Console. We also have other products, but I, there's just way too much to talk about in this one video. So just check the links down below, check out our website, you'll learn a ton. Finally, this is the last one, and I kind of mentioned this already, but I am gonna go back to it. Ensure the URL slug is the exact keyword phrase that you wanna show up for in its essence. So back to this example of become a Squarespace designer. If somebody wrote how to become a Squarespace designer, I don't need the words how to in my search, but becoming a Squarespace designer is the key, is the focus keyword I want. So if someone types in Squarespace designer, let's say for example, that's all they type in, they could be looking for a few things. They could be looking to hire someone, they could be looking to compare pricing, who knows. But if it says how to become or become a Squarespace designer, that is a whole different type of search versus just Squarespace designer. And then how to, oops, how to become a Squarespace designer, that is an emphasis on the same thing of becoming a Squarespace designer. So let's see, how to become a Squarespace developer. That's a close variant, pretty much the same thing. So you'll see here, again, we show up fourth. It's almost the same exact results uh, for the difference between developer and designer. So I would definitely do keyword research in Google Keyword Planner or maybe some other keyword tools if you don't have access to Keyword Planner. But that's what you want the URL slug to be. It's so, so important. Finally, make sure you check out that blogging checklist. It's a great resource. It's built in Notion. So if you use Notion, literally you could just duplicate it a million times for any blog post that you write. And if you're looking for a more in-depth product, our blogging starter kit is on sale now and is a great way to start. It's what I wish I had when I started blogging. It will save you a ton of time and resources to make sure that you're optimizing and you're headed on the right path. Hey, thank you for watching. If you got value from today's video, hit the like button. If you got to the end of the video, you're my type of people. So drop a comment down below saying I got to the end or made it to the end. With that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.